So this is a 24 foot enclosed trailer and it'll haul about 3,500 pounds. It has a 7,000 pound gross weight and the trailer itself weighs about 3,500. So it can carry its own weight. That's a small SUV, like probably a RAV4, a Honda Civic, anything 3,500 pounds or less. It has a fairly um, low ceiling and so you have to make sure to measure the height of the vehicle or whatever it is that you're hauling before you you do that. So let me show you here how this thing works. So like most trailers, it's got a conventional ball type hitch. The ball fits into this socket. This locking tab is dro dropped in and then there's a pin inserted. So we'll demonstrate that further here in a minute. But this trailer has a very important connection. It's the very common seven-way connection, which hooks up the ground, the lights, and most importantly, the trailer brakes. This has electric trailer brakes. So when you step on the brake in the truck, it activates the electric brakes within each wheel. There are four, four brakes. For, for the four different axles, four different wheels. And as a backup, should the trailer become disconnected, this pin is pulled because this pin is going, this cable is going to be attached to the hitch to the vehicle. When this pin gets pulled, it, it closes a switch and there's a battery in here that will give you temporary power to the brakes. So the brakes are applied as soon as this pin is pulled through the battery in here. And this battery is of course recharged when this is plugged into the truck. And so this is the brake emergency backup battery. And we test it every once in a while to make sure it's working. Okay, I'm gonna pull the vehicle around and I'll demonstrate how to safely attach it to the to the trailer okay I've got the vehicle backed up to the hitch there is a camera in the back of the vehicle here a backup camera make sure that's clean that gets me close and as you can see I got pretty close here what I'm going to do is I'm gonna lower this just a little bit using this crank handle just so I have a little bit of pressure on this ball and then I'm going to back up the rest of the way. And you, okay, I have this lever up. I'm all lined up here, the ball to the socket. I'm gonna go ahead and lower. The unit. So the weight is all the way on the hitch. And you can see it now just released from that the jack. Keep cranking. I want this off the ground quite a ways. I don't want it to accidentally hit the roadway when we're driving over a bump. So I'm going to continue to crank here. Okay, that's up quite a ways. So now I'm going to flip this safety pin down or this safety lever down. I'll insert the safety pin. So the safety pins in place. Then I've got two safety chains that I'm going to hook up, one to each side, like so. There, I've got one on each side. And notice they're not going to drag on the pavement. I can move these out of the way now. These blocks out of the way. So I've got the two safety chains. And then if you remember, I talked about the emergency brake actuator. I'm going to hook that up. Now what I like to do is I like to utilize the hitch pin 
and I just drape it over the hitch pin like that. So now this has got slack in it. And then the last thing, and very importantly, is I need to hook up my seven way. And so I will pull that down. It only goes in one way. Push it in as far as I can and make sure that that's properly in place. And then I like to drape, kind of like to drape this cord over like that, that big cable. So now when I turn, go over bumps and so forth, it's not going to come undone. So there it is, it's all hooked up and ready to go. So now I'm going to do a safety check. The first thing and probably most important thing I'm going to check is to make sure the trailer brakes are operating. This is the trailer brake actuator. Whenever this lever is pulled, the trailer brakes are actuated. And as you can see on my gauge there, it is working. The trailer brake is actuating. And they will also actuate when I step on the brake, the foot brake. I also want to check and make sure that my lights are hooked up. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on my hazard lights. Oh, and as long as I'm at it, I'm going to turn on the vehicle lights so I can check everything. Looks like my vehicle lights are working, so the trailer lights are working. Let's make sure I have brake lights back here. Left side, right side. Okay. Okay, smooth movers. I'm in the vehicle. I've got the trailer attached and I'm ready to go. Now, a couple things to remember when you're pulling a trailer. Your braking is not going to be nearly as effective as it is when you're not pulling a trailer. So the braking distances are quite a bit longer. So be prepared for that. When we're towing, we engage the tow mode on the end of the gear shift lever. And you should see a little trailer light illuminate. Here, let me take it off once push it back on, re-engage it. Okay, so stay in trailer mode. And the other thing I like to do is I like to use the exhaust brake. Because it's a diesel engine, it has an exhaust brake. And that'll help me slow down also. A couple of pointers for you while you're driving with the trailer attached. First of all, when I'm at high speed and I want to slow down, I oftentimes will start with just using this controller here to bring the brakes of the trailer on before I engage the automobile brakes or the, the truck brakes. Now you don't have to do this, but I like to do it. Um, helps to save the brakes of the truck, especially if you're pulling something very heavy with the trailer. And let me show you what that looks like. So I'm underway right now and I want to slow down. Let's say I'm doing 60 miles an hour and I want to slow down. I might engage the trailer brakes just slightly, make sure that they're working using the hand controller here. But I don't have to do that. I could just use the foot brake as well. But it's always good to make sure that the brakes are working. And you could do that by turning on the hand controller or activating the hand controller and making sure the vehicle slows down. And right now I can tell that the vehicle is slowing down significantly with just the trailer brakes. If I'm on slippery conditions and I feel the trailer may be breaking loose or something, um, now you shouldn't be going that fast that this is going to happen, but it could happen. 
engage the trailer brakes alone, not the vehicle brakes, and it should straighten right out. Kind of like a drag behind you, like a parachute or a drag chute behind you. This truck has very good brakes, and so between the trailer brakes and the truck service brakes, you should have no trouble coming to a stop from a reasonable, reasonable speed. If I'm going downhill, a long downhill, I don't go any faster than 50 miles an hour if I'm coming through a mountain pass. That way I can always stay in control of things. I won't overheat my brakes. I can actually engage a lower gear too. I can move the truck into the manual mode, M mode, as you can see there, M. And then I can downshift using the downshift button and I can just roll down in a lower gear. Again, if I'm going down a long mountain grade or something, long hill. Pull the tow mirrors out. Helps you to see along the side of the trailer. That's both sides, of course. Tire pressure, 80 PSI cold. If you go 75, that's fine. Absolutely no more than 80 PSI cold though. Okay, there are four mounting lugs for the chain or the straps. One, two, and there's two up front here also. So what we're going to do is we're going to run the vehicle in so that the vehicle's center of gravity is just forward of the middle of the axles. So we don't want the vehicle all the way to the front with all of that weight hanging on the tongue. And we certainly don't want it all the way in the back because that will make for an unstable trailer. So we want to pull the vehicle in so it's just in front of the middle of the axles. So just forward of the axles is where we want to put it. And then we'll anchor it using the straps. We'll tie the straps around the, the frame and we'll cinch the front to the front lugs and around the rear of the frame of the car to the back lugs. You can use the suspension if there isn't a frame, but do not use such things as the bumper, the grill, things like that. Make sure it's something very sturdy.